In this video, I'm going to dive into the world of AI NPCs to create lifelike, engaging and expressive NPCs that can hold unscripted conversations in your game. First, I'm going to show you a game demo that uses these AI NPCs that you can just talk to them and they'll talk back. Second, I'm going to show you how you can create your own AI NPCs with their own personalities, emotions, personal knowledge and goals. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to put this AI avatar into your game so you can have a unique gaming experience. We are going to use the software called InWorld, the sponsor of this video, because they make all of this very easy. Feel free to jump around in the timeline because I got timestamps. So first, let's try out the demo together. So all you got to do is go to Steam and then search for InWorld Origins. And this is the game that they have made all with AI NPCs. So I can show off how different it is compared to normal games and what you can expect. I never tried this before, so let's try it together and see how the future of AI gaming is gonna be. Quick instructions, WASD to move, use mouse to look, ESC to open a menu, X to use the radio. I'm gonna toggle on the subtitles right now. You can also toggle on the push to talk, but I'm just gonna have the normal microphone be on here so it feels more real. I'm gonna name myself Andy. All right, let's begin. Talk to the characters as you would talk to people in real life. All right, intro. Somewhere below the city of Metropolis, a place where humans and robots coexist under a shaky social system, a detective, you, has arrived at a chaotic scene. It appears that an explosion of some kind has disrupted daily life in the surrounding area. Greetings, detective. I'm Special Agent Janice. You have been authorized by the Metropolis Bureau of Investigations to conduct interviews with possible witnesses. Okay, I can do that. Detective, I am here to assist you in your investigation. Feel free to ask. Okay, thank you. See you later. Thank you for your acknowledgement. Detective, may I make a suggestion? Detective, I think you should start by talking to that disaster queen up with the headlamp. On your left, he may have found victims in the rubble. Hey, excuse me. Yes, what do you require? Do you know anything that happened around here? There was an explosion. Debris and toxic chemicals are present. What should we do about it? Seek assistance from a robot with detective capabilities. You're talking to him right now. Can you tell me anything you think would be interesting? Unknown life forms and broken bots. Unknown life forms? What do you mean? Animals of unknown origin. Bots of unknown origin. So they were not from here? No. They were not from here. Thank you. Bye. Sure. You're welcome. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask. <laughs> That's really cool. How's it going? Are you? I am not your bro, <laughs> and I am certainly not your friend. Don't you see what's happening here? Robots are being destroyed, and no one seems to care. Okay. I'll make them listen. One way, just okay, is that all you have to say. No, I don't agree. You the this is of completely bad. I don't like anything that's going on here. Um, I think that you have a cool voice and uh, I like your enthusiasm enthusiasm are you mocking me <laughs> this is not a time for compliments this is a time for action for standing up against the oppression and destruction of synthetic life forms this is such a different type of game and <laughs> I never thought it would be this lost. fun let's see if we can get closer to the lab though uh, I lost my train of thought where were we so there's a scientist where the lab exploded there's unknown creatures, there's unknown robots that were created like Frankenstein. Do you know anything else? There were many unknown creatures and robots in the lab. But you see, my father, Dr. Lawton, he he might still be trapped underneath the rubble. I'm really worried about him. There's something else that I remember. Before the explosion, I saw a man at the laboratory. He was arguing with my father. I think his name was Duke Blue. I wonder if he had something to do with the explosion. And... I fear that my sister may have escaped during the chaos. I hope she's safe somewhere in this vast city. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Now, what have you learned from your interviews thus far, detective? So, there are unknown alien-like creatures and robots that are mixed together like Frankenstein. We have a lab that exploded. There is a guy named Blue Duke. Seems we have a complex web of motives and potential suspects in this case. Baller Duke's anger and his connection to the missing sister could be significant lead. Okay, some key takes away from the game. First, I feel like we have unlocked a new dimension. I really never felt like this before in a game. And specifically, I really like that you kind of have to listen and you have to give those key pieces of information 
for them to unlock something new. Sometimes during the game, I felt like it was real, like I was talking to an angry robot. So I'm just left with a feeling like I want more of this. I would love to talk more to AI NPCs and collaborate and get together, lifelike for sure. So now let's go into how you can do this yourself and put it into a game. So let's go to the next step. So the first step is just to go to inworld.ai and click on get started. First screen that you will reach is this screen here with a bunch of characters. Uh, I've created a couple more as well, but all you need to do is click on create new character and then make a name for it like AI Andy. And then I'm gonna write a core description. What is this character gonna be? So the description is AI Andy is an engineer that creates technology and software in his lab. He uses artificial intelligence and robotics to make people superhuman. And then you can also click on this auto generate button that lengthens this prompt and creates it even better. So I'm just gonna click on create here. And there we go. Now I'm gonna continue to the character creation stage. You can see it expanded the core description and I can put some flaws down here as well. Like for example, perfectionism or hyper obsessive. It's also filled out the motivations here like the desire to improve people's lives through his inventions, which is super cool. Then you can choose a dialogue style, preset or custom. I think we're just gonna go with the preset, bubbly, formal, blunt, inquisitive. I think we're gonna do mysterious with this one. And you can provide an example of how it would like to give a conversation. And this fine tunes the character later. So you could potentially take, you know, your text messages or something like that and put it right in here. Then we come to the voice section that we wanna go with masculine, age, a little middle age. And here you can see the different voices that it has. So let's listen to Sean for a moment. Hello, I'm AI. I Andy Tinker. Okay. Anthony Myers. Hello. I need I Andy Tinker. Mm, Brett. Hello. I need I Andy Tinker. Okay, that was better. Hello. I need I Andy Tinker. And you can also do the pitch. So if you do minus five. Hello. I need I Andy Tinker. Yeah, it gets crazy like that. And as you can see, you can even integrate with Eleven Labs, which is my full favorite AI voice software. So you can just add the API key here and then it uses that. Now, before I show you how to create the 3D avatar, I'm gonna click on advanced here. You can see that you can add even more personality to it. If you see a mood, you can increase the joy. You can be more positive. You can have extremely angry, extremely aggressive, all of these different variables. And I really like that they have it so fine tuned because a lot of these things make a big difference on the entirety of a character. So that's how we're gonna keep him. And then you can include personal knowledge. Now, let me just show you something crazy that you can put in here to get your AI to have a lot more information. So I make YouTube videos, but if you had, for example, a book, PDF, or some documents, you can still use what I'm gonna show you right now. So for example, you can see this 27 best AI tools. And let's say we wanted to put that into his personal knowledge. All we would have to do is copy the link address, go over to ChatGPT and include this Vox script. And then I can say, create two sentence facts found in this video and I can post a link to it. And now you can see that I'm getting all of the knowledge from the video itself. And I can easily just come in, copy and paste those facts directly into the software. And now it understands exactly what I gave to it. And each line you can paste over 300 characters, which is quite a lot of information per line. And then we got common knowledge. And this is different because this can be shared across multiple characters. This can be given to everyone, like what year they live in, which city they live in, and what is going on with the world right now. And then if you go all the way down, you can see we have scenes. And this is almost like a level of the game. So you go from one scene to another scene to another scene. And here they have all of these uh, to continue with this tutorial and uh, just put them in a scene like Calip Caterpillar's mushroom and click on save because we're going to bring that up when we bring him into the game. And the newest feature they added was goals. So here you can, for example, set goals for the character like this name, give quest activation, intent quest request. So probably ask the question, hey, do you have a quest for me? And then it will actually give the instruction tell player to visit queen bee to get a javelin made with a honey bee's stinger and the emotion change will be joy and send the trigger quest given so you can see the intent down here like these phrases if you ask that to him like 
do you have any quests for me? Or what quest should I take on next? He will actually prompt this instruction here, which is really cool. All right, perfect. We got the entire personality created. Now, all we have to do is click on the profile image. You can have a 2D avatar image and configure a 3D avatar. In the world works with any character skeleton, but I'm gonna use Ready Player Me as an example. Just like that, we got a profile image and ready to put him into the game. First off, you can see all the integrations right here, like Unity, Unreal Engine, even Roblox and Minecraft. And if you scroll a little bit down, you need to click on Generate New Key. Then you also have to generate studio access token. So I'm gonna click on this and then I'm gonna copy and paste this code. I'm gonna do it in Unity. It works very similar in Unreal Engine as well. Now, if you got Unity Engine open, you just click on new project and here create the 3D core. And then we're just gonna create it right now. The next step is to go to the Unity Asset Store and just search for in-world. Here you can see, you can just click on open in Unity. You'll get this prompt here, open Unity Editor. Right away, you get this package manager where you have to download it and then just click on import. You'll get this other pop-up here with a bunch of things. Just click on import again. This will take a few minutes to just import into your project. There we go, the packet has been imported. I'm just gonna close this one down. And now what you'll see in the top here is the in-world setting. So you can just click on the studio panel. You'll get this other pop-up here as well. We're just gonna import that one too. That goes really quick. And then they have some in-world scenes that you can click on here. We're not gonna use these ones. We're gonna click on log in. And here is where you paste your entire studio code. I'm gonna paste it and click on log in. Just like that, you can now select your workspace, click on a key, click on in-world scene. You remember we had the category pillars mushroom selected for the character we just created. And just like that, you can see the AI and the tinkerer is now available. So I'm just gonna click on him. That opens this menu in the bottom left and I'm just gonna X out on this studio. Now we can just drag him right into our game just like this. And there is one more step. So just go into the inward studio, click on add player controller to Unity scene. This is important so you can move around and click on okay. And bada bing bada boom. Just click on play and we're gonna move closer to him and we can say, hey, what's up? I'm fine. What do you want? What do you want to see in this lab? I can show you some of my inventions. I wanna turn myself into a robot, like maybe a robot arm prosthetic or something like that. Can you help me with that? A robot arm prosthetic. I might be able to help you with that. I need to know more about you. What are your interests? Are you a good person or a bad person? I don't know if I'm good or bad, but I heard you were a good person to help me with artificial intelligence and robotics because I want to become more productive. I'll show you some of my inventions, but I can't guarantee that I can help you with your request. Let's take a look at what I have in my lab. And just like that, you got an AI NPC in your game. If you find this video helpful, drop a like on it. Also, check out our Patreon for more exclusive content just like this. And check out my other videos. I promise you'll like them. Check out InWorld and make your own character in the link in the description. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.